Hello and welcome to Scout Report, where today we're looking at players on the fringes of top clubs who could be worth picking up this summer. From young stars who need more minutes to underrated veterans, these are the outcasts who could strengthen your team for the 1920 season. Let's get into it. 5. Danny Ceballos In a summer where Gareth Bale, Isco and James Rodriguez have all been linked with exits from Real Madrid, Danny Ceballos has arguably commanded more attention than all three. Tottenham and Arsenal are linked, but the Gunners won the race to bring the Spanish international on a year-long loan. Just 22, Ceballos is keen to play his way back into Zidane's plan at the Bernabeu and rediscover the form which saw the Blancos trigger his buyout at Real Betis in 2017. This means that the temporary switch to London will not include an option to buy. With Chelsea and Manchester United rebuilding, a short-term move to help secure fourth spot is a smart decision from the Gunners and Ceballos looks like an ideal acquisition. Playing in a more advanced role for Real than he did for Betis, Ceballos registered the best attacking output of his young career last season, with XG predicting the midfielder would grab a goal or assist every four games. That rate which compares well with Tottenham new boy Tangai Ndombele, who despite his seven assists in League 1 in 18-19, is only expected to contribute once every five games. But Ceballos is much more impressive in defence and build-up in the final third. Last season saw big defensive numbers, with 3.4 tackles and interceptions per 90, but Arsenal will hope to see the youngster return to his Betis form, where he managed an astonishing 5.7 defensive actions every game. Figures which would place him among the 10 most active defenders in the Premier League. But while someone like Wilfred Ndidi wins the ball around 6.2 times for his team, he is not the ball progressor Ceballos is, with just a single successful dribble or match. That's about the same as the Spaniard managed in Madrid, where Modric and Cruz did the majority of the forward ball movement. But at Betis, Ceballos beat his man over three times a match. That could be crucial for an Arsenal side relying on the ponderous Granit Xhaka and in whose squad only Iwobi and Lacazette break 1.5 dribbles per game. Despite Xhaka's obvious shortcomings in defence and mobility last season, Unai Emery was forced to keep picking the Swiss as the absence of Ozil stripped the Gunners of incisiveness, but Ceballos could solve that problem. At Betis, he learned to participate in a high-tempo, high-possession game and that's only improved at Madrid. Last season, he completed 46 of the 53 long balls he attempted in that Liga and only Tony Cruz more involved in the play, with Ceballos averaging 73 passes a game, 8 more than Luka Modric. Arsenal's problems are such that there are very few players who could solve them on their own, but Ceballos might be one such player. It may be just 12 months, but if he returns the North Londoners to the Champions League, the 22-year-old could be the most important signing of Emery's tenor at the Emirates. 4. Danny Rose The first of the two left-backs on our list, Danny Rose was excused from Tottenham's pre-season tour to Singapore and Shanghai as he seeks to move away from White Hart Lane. The defender who has spent 12 years with the Lilywhites after joining as a 17-year-old has been an important player under Maurizio Pochettino. But nonetheless, he has never made 30 league appearances in a single campaign, with Deli Ali, who has been at the club for just four years, currently only 14 games behind Rose's total for Spurs. And with the left-back recently turning 29, it's a good time to sell, especially as Rose's strong showing in the latter stages of the Champions League has attracted buyers from Europe's top table. Juventus and PSG have both taken an interest in the England international, and without a single trophy to his name, the chance to rack up a few league titles on the continent is no doubt appealing to the player. Roses remains a top-class defender. Last year, he averaged 3.7 tackles and interceptions per match and succeeded with 80% of his attempts, making him one of the best defensive fullbacks in the Prem. And while Ariel Power may not be the former lead trainee's strong suit, he has steadily improved in that department, with two of his best seasons for Ariel win percentage coming in the last three seasons. 1.8 dribbles per 90 minutes is also a very strong record for a wide defender, only better than the Premier League by Arthur Masuaku, Juan Bissaka and Ricardo Pereira. Rose was even more adventurous in the Champions League, where he completed nearly 2.5 take-ons a match, more than Usman Dembele and Kylian Mbappe. Add in 1.3 key passes, the same as Deli Ali and Son, and you have an exceptionally well-rounded player who can still contribute at the top level, especially if he is to move to a dominant side who could afford to rest him for big games in the continental competitions. For all the justified excitement over Tangai Ndombele and the pursuit of Giovanni Lo Celso, what will determine Tottenham's success over the next few years could be their ability to turn over an excellent but elderly backline. For good or bad, Rose's departure is the first step towards a new Spurs. 3. Dalbert Another left-back is in at 3, in the form of Inter Milan's Dalbert. The Brazilian joined the Nerazzurri in 2017 after a spectacular season at Nice, where he and Ricardo Pereira formed one of the best fullback pairings in France. But two years on, the defender has just 1,300 minutes and 13 starts in Serie A to his name, with Luciano Spalletti preferring Quadro Asamoah on the left flank. Dalbert will hope that Antonio Conte can see his merits, but if not, he'd be an excellent purchase for any side looking for a two-way fullback. 
In his last year with Nice, Dalbert made 4.2 tackles and interceptions a game, a figure which has since risen to 4.7. His tackle success rate has stayed sky high, with 79% of his challenges seeing him walk away with the ball, much better than Pereira in the same side, who came out on top in just 67% of his tackles. At 6 foot, he is solid in the air too, winning 53% of his duels, down from 58% in France, but still more than good enough in the wide areas. However, the switch to Italy has seen Dalbert's dribbling fall, dropping from an excellent 1.5 completed per 90 minutes, the same as Leicester's Ben Chilwell, to just 0.3. That's such a big difference that it suggests that he's been asked to run less, and at 25, it would be extremely surprising if he had entirely lost the ability to beat a man. Regardless, he's still capable of playing the final pass, with 1.2 chances created a match, the best of his career so far. He also makes himself available to the man in possession, with more passes in each game than Nyingalan, who was brought in to run matches from the middle of the park. Costing into 21 million euros, Dalbert's extended stay on the bench will surely mean his value has dropped, meaning he could easily be snapped up for a bargain fee of 50 million euros and drawn attention from Lyon and Monaco. With quality fullbacks in higher demand than ever, Dalbert surely can't continue to rot in the reserves. 2. Douglas Costa It's easy to forget that Douglas Costa is a Juventus player. After just 600 league minutes in the 2018-19 campaign, following the arrival of Cristiano Ronaldo. That was around a two-thirds reduction on his game time from the previous season and meant that the Brazilian scored just one Serie A goal, having netted four and assisted 12 in 2017-18. That gave the former Bayern man a goal involvement every 112 minutes and at 28, it's reasonable to assume that he could still put up solid numbers if given a starting berth on a decent team. After all, the white man has won nine titles in the last 10 seasons with only Dynamo Kiev's triumph in the 14-15 Ukrainian Premier League preventing him from doing what no European giant has ever managed, racking up 10 titles in a row. Given his small sample last season, it makes sense to look at Costas since 2017, and he is clearly still a useful player for a top team. He has been an excellent creator over the last four campaigns, making over two chances a game every year, and hitting around three since his move to Juventus, where his 0.4 expected assists per 90 ranked him top of Serie A in 17-18. He usually manages close to three shots each game too, though a whopping 52% of those came from outside the penalty area. It is perhaps his tendency to take on attempts from all angles which saw him bent by Max Allegri, with the shot-happy role in Bayern Canary's squad already occupied by Cristiano Ronaldo. However, Costa can play a useful role in moving his team up the field. He averaged a staggering 4.4 dribbles completed per 90 minutes last year and a truly incredible 5.3 the year before, making him one of Europe's most successful and most entertaining players with the ball at his feet. Though his age is likely to see super clubs swerve him, Costa's exceptional speed means he can afford to lose a step and still be faster than almost any defender, while he'll also be keen to secure a final lucrative contract as he enters the final stage of his career. If Maurizio Sarri decides he can live without the winger, a team on the up like Everton could feasibly land him as a bargain alternative to Wilfred Zaha. 1. Malcolm a year on Barca's bench seems to have turned Malcolm, formerly one of Europe's most sought-after youngsters, radioactive with Tottenham, Arsenal and Bayern Munich, all previously interested in the Brazilian, refusing to pay anything up front for the 22-year-old and instead suggesting loan deals. In fact, the only team to think he's retained the value over the last 12 months is Barcelona, with the Blaugrana reportedly seeking a 10 million euro profit to sell the wide man, despite handing him only 600 league minutes in 1819. That would be more damaging to our view of the player if Usman Dembele hadn't also spent half the season on the bench and Malcolm still looked lively in his restricted game time. Though unsurprisingly, he failed to match his tally from his final year with Bordeaux, hitting three goals and assists. That is compared to his 19 in Ligue 1 the season before. His expected goals and assists per 90 remain stable at 0.5 a game, the same as Bernardo Silva and exceptionally strong for such a young player. The big change was in ball progression. At Barca with Busquets, Rakitic, Vidal, Coutinho and Leo Messi in the team, Malcolm's role was to stay high and be available in the final third for runs or combination play. But at Bordeaux, Malcolm was the outstanding player and as a result, the former Corinthians man often had to get the ball upfield, create chances and score too. That meant that in a campaign he began as a 20-year-old, he put up 2.7 key passes per 90, which would have ranked fifth amongst under 25s across Europe in the last campaign, and also completed 2.9 dribbles, numbers which have since dropped to 1.9 and 1.6. All this suggests that Malcolm would thrive in a team where he had the freedom to run the attack however he wanted. Though clearly Champions League quality, he'd be a great replacement and arguably a solid upgrade. If Crystal Palace were to lose Wilfred Zaha, while Leon could also look to him as a Fakir substitute if Arsenal and Bayern continue to dither. One way or another, the winger who is already a title winner in Brazil and Spain deserves to spend more time on the field in the 1920 season. 
he could yet prove himself as a superstar. So that was five big club rejects that your club should sign. If you think we've missed anyone out or have any suggestions, get them down in the comments below. And as always, like and subscribe.